10 days till 2.6 releases and I'm gonna tell you my 15 mini theories in the latest special program trailer. At number 1, the chasm holds within it two enigmas from history. Dainsleep mentions that there is more than one kind of strange power in the chasm. One of them could be the Abyss Order, but the other could be of Celestian origin. From the history of the chasm, it was formed from a star that fell from the sky. And after near endless slaughter from the Archon Wars, the star decided to quote-unquote leap away toward the heavens. Add to that, the ending sequence shows off the lector harnessing some kind of stone. Perhaps this stone, which was a shard of the star that fell from the sky and left, is what the Abyss Order wants to take for themselves. At number 2, one of the scenes show off a Skyfrost nail glowing in some point of the cave system. Why would there be a Skyfrost nail inside of the chasm? Well, this celestial nail can also be seen in a short millisecond scene near the end of the trailer, along with an upside down chamber and a glowing mushroom tree, showing off its importance as well as the others and its relations to the entire questline. A third kingdom, punished by Celestia maybe? We already have Kanria and Vindagner, as well as Enkanamiya falling apart being a byproduct of the second heavenly war thousands and thousands of years ago. Number 3, a new shadowy husk can be seen in the trailer, this time with a sword, which makes it the fourth shadowy husk in the game we can fight. We also see more of their comrades in the chasm itself. So it seems these abyss knights are more than just a few select individuals. Maybe they were part of Kanrias, old royal guards. And maybe Dainsleaf knows what these hollow knights really are. Ever wanted a Yai Miko or Raiden Shogun wall scroll slash folding screen? Well, look no further because this new patch lets you see countless banners of both waifus to fawn over. Hopefully, Horniver, I mean Koyoverse, makes these banners and screens into craftable furniture to add to our Otaku Serenity Pot collection. What's better is that Raiden Shogun plushies can be seen where Sayu is buying from a store. Another furniture add-on perhaps? Sayu also did say that there were figurines. So maybe there's more than just Raiden Shogun plushies that we can purchase. We've yet to see what else that store is selling, of course. At number 6, the gold light coming from the hole at the bottom of the chasm looks very similar to the recent Three Realms event in Enkanamiya. Not only in that final scene, we see more light magic being used, and this time by the Abyss Order themselves. Maybe they have some sort of relation to the light magic slash element after all. And maybe they used to wield this power before they started using Abyss powers. At number 7, of course, Mr. Worldwide Twilight Sword Bowkeeper Dainsleaf is back at it again. And this time, he's investigating the chasm with us. Hopefully, he tells us how he's still alive after chasing down our sibling and going to whatever part of the abyss they all went to. At number 8, the upside down chamber at the end of the trailer seems to hold some sort of relation to the fragment of the fallen star. And it's all the more weird because the whole chamber is upside down. And do you know what's more interesting than this upside down chamber that for some reason is related to the fragment of a fallen star? An upside down Enkanomiya. See, the upside down city in the chasm has the same structural assets as Enkanamiya. Specifically, these gold patterns, this pedestal with gold accents, and even some of the interior design of the city from certain scenes are similar to that of Enkanamiya's design. Heck, like even the background music used when showing off the chasm in the special program imports the same vibe from Enkanamiya. So, could this be a missing part of the fallen city of Enkanamiya? Or is this just Hoyoverse recycling their assets? At number 10, the new artifact set for most likely Xiao comes from one of his Yaksha comrades, specifically this guy here. Although no official lore or info has been released by Mihoyo themselves, but this helmet or headpiece looks way too similar to the four-armed Yaksha's face in Xiao's cinematic trailer. The lower teeth extrusions as well as his huge eyebrows, yes they are eyebrows, are kind of a dead giveaway to what lies beneath the chasm. Zhongli specifically said that one of them fell or succumbed into the darkness. The trailer itself for the chasm says something about more than one strange power as well. And the fallen star can be a strong reason for why the Electro Yaksha fell to its strange power. At number 11, the newest ruined serpent boss in the chasm shows off its digging capabilities and ability to make quicksand and sinkholes to run away from. But did you notice the multiple purple patches around the boss area? You can also see him 
in the preview for the chasm having this weird purple aura. A new poison ailment maybe? Or is this just a new visual design by Hoyoverse? Next, there is nothing much to mention at number 12, but apparently boba tea was invented way earlier in this timeline. You can see Ayato drinking boba tea as his idol animation. Hopefully, we can make that dish 100 times using his special food talent. He also apparently gives Toma any suspicious looking food. So that's probably why Toma is so good at eating random stuff. Not just that, Ito also met him in his character trailer and holds Ayato in pretty high High regard. You can go check out Tito's character trailer if you want to, but you might want to listen for this 13th hidden detail about Ayato. The word Cypress Custis means Cypress Guard, which refers to the Cypress tree or Hinoki trees in Japan, known for its high quality and ornamental qualities. A very strong wood that is rot resistant made for building houses and shrines, and is also used as ornaments and design elements, which reflects Ayato's personality, willpower, and goodwill, as well as his overall character. Oh, and one last thing, if you're wondering what Ayato smells like, he smells like lemons. Wanna know why? Because the wiki says so! Second to the last, in the special program of the chasm, we get to see a floating rock that glows yellow, reminiscent of the Dragonfall rock and the Core Lapis all around Liwe. So this is probably a piece that we need to interact with so we can open the way inside the chasm. Lastly, the new domain in the chasm is a lot different than the previous domains. This domain's design is specific to the chasm's aesthetic, which makes it interesting considering why there would be a domain fashioned in the likes of the chasm than say, an abyss-like domain, or an electro domain, or an animo domain. This means that someone created this domain and was using it either for the chasm's benefit or to siphon something from the chasm. There you go my 15 mini theories on the latest special program trailer of patch 2.6. Now I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Of course, new trailer and new story quest means new lore and new theory. So expect to see some more new and wild theories at some point after 2.6 releases. I'm gonna be making some random vids here and there to fill the 10 day gap so just pick your fancy and watch whenever and whatever you wish. I would also like to add that I will start streaming on Twitch in the very very near future. I'm gonna be streaming a wide variety of things that I feel like playing. Obviously Genshin is gonna be a part of it. I'm currently streaming Elden Ring but I'm also thinking of streaming Monster Hunter or maybe Skyrim or maybe Minecraft. But whatever it is I'm gonna be streaming, it's gonna be up to me, and you guys have the freedom to either watch or not watch me. So please go to my Twitch channel and follow me there. It's not all Genshin content but it's gonna be more of a me type of content. So what are you waiting for? Go follow my Twitch and watch my streams. But with all that said, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video, yeah? Bye!